So you started TIG welding, huh? <laughs> well, okay. TIG welding in general is a little bit tougher for most people because unlike the other welding processes, we have a torch in one hand, we have a filler rod in another hand, we have a foot pedal, and all three of those things have to come together. So there's a lot of stuff we can do to get you prepared for this. But today, I just want to talk about getting you started on your pad of beads that you're going to do and a couple of the little problems that you're going to run into. Now, first things first, these filler metal rods are flimsy and they're long. You can cut these in half to make them a little more manageable. But the problem with TIG welding is you're feeding this by hand. So you can hold it up close and have really good control dipping it in your metal and then you dip it about five times and you're burning your hand. Or you can slide your hand back and you can try and do precision dips on this flimsy rod and it just doesn't work very well. So one of the things you need to learn how to do, and you can do this very simple by taking a piece, ask your instructor, take a little piece of this filler metal home and just sit there while you're watching TV and you're gonna feed it through your fingers. Back and forth, back and forth. And you wanna do it to where you're talking with your friends or your family and you're watching TV and you're not even paying any attention, you're just doing it. So it's very simple. Here's what I do to start. I lay that rod and grab it with my thumb and I grab it with my fingers and I pull it through. I grab it and pull it. Grab it and pull it. The other way, we pull it, pinch it here. That's really all I'm doing. That's the best way to start doing this. Now once you get better at it, you're gonna get your thumb down in there and you're going to get a little bit more fine-tuned at it and you're going to start using your thumb and your fingertips but to begin with don't even worry about that the advantage to learn how to do this right off the bat is when I'm welding I don't have to have my hand up here on the weld getting burned and my hands not way back here with this rod wiggling all over the place I can set my hand right here and I can just keep filling with good control and keep filling that filler, feeding that filler all the way across that thing. My hand is steady, it's touching the table, and I don't ever have to move it, and I can just keep feeding that filler. That's one thing to learn that's gonna help you right off the bat with any TIG welding you do. Secondly, when you guys first begin, now I've got my TIG torch and there's other videos on the TIG machines and how we get this started, but I'm just gonna show you a couple little things that's gonna help you when you get started, okay? First thing is first, questions we get all the time. How far should my tungsten be from the plate? Well, remember, the further you get your tungsten away, the bigger the heated area. So you wanna keep your tungsten as close as you can to the plate, but, you also have to save room for the filler. I can't come in and dip that filler and touch that tungsten each time. So sometimes what people do, and it's not a good habit to get into, is they'll get it really close and then when they dip the filler, they'll back the tungsten away and they'll get into doing this. And that's really not a good idea. It's a bad habit. What you wanna do is get your torch set up angled in a little bit of the direction that you're going, have it far enough away. But the other thing to think about when you're dipping, dipping filler is not an up and down motion. Because if I come in and dip it and pull it up, I'm always touching that tungsten, which is a problem. So what you might want to think about doing is kind of rolling this filler in with your fingers in your hand. So you're coming in like this instead of up and down. As I move across, I start my pedal, I get nice consistency here, and I just keep dipping that filler in all the way across. My torch is moving and my filler is dipping. I'm not touching it, everything's consistent, and it works great. Now the other thing is, for getting nice consistent TIG beads with nice smooth ripples, good width, consistent height. We have to dip consistently. So we count to ourselves, one, two, three, four, 
One, two, three, four. If Justin Timberlake is your favorite musician, think of his song that you like. Get that foot going, but time yourself somehow. Because it's not just how frequent we dip, it's also how long we dip for. The longer you dip that filler metal in that puddle, the more metal melts off, the bigger the dip is gonna be, the bigger the weld's gonna be. So you wanna get started with feeding that filler through. Second thing is, nice and consistent with your torch, rocking that filler in instead of up and down. And the third thing is, get yourself a beat going. Get a beat going as you're dipping that thing. Boom, 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 boom. That creates consistent frequency and duration of how long this rod is in the puddle. And that is how we get really nice looking TIG welds. Because if we weren't trying to get a really nice looking weld, it might as well just MIG weld it, it's a lot easier. So, don't get frustrated. You've got a lot more to balance with TIG than the other procedures. One, two, three components that got to come together make a nice looking weld, but this is the precision welding. This is the welds that make you go ooh. Get your instructor in there to show you demos, get them in there to show you their little tricks and techniques, and most importantly, you gotta put the hours into practice. After you do that, you'll just be getting started in your TIG welding career.